Hey everybody, it's Jay Janess with the Slasher Mini Network, and today my review for you is going to be the Nintendo Game Boy Player. Uh, it, it it's really a nice piece of uh, equipment. It, it's a beautiful add-on for the GameCube. So let's take a closer look at it. Here we have it, the Game Boy Player for the GameCube. As you see, it, it's not all that big. When you attach it to the bottom of the GameCube, it only adds about an inch to the height of the GameCube. And it fits very, very nicely on it. As you see, you've got the little screws here that you could attach it to when you finally install it. But let's go over a couple of things here first. You have your slot for your Game Boy games. And we'll plug in Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. And it slides right in. Now on the side here, you have your eject switch. Press it all the way out, and you take your game out. And there you go, you can change your packs. Uh, you have your high speed port, port right there uh, that it plugs into on the GameCube so it'll be able to read the system. But, this, the system itself is actually quite useless without the Game Boy Player boot up disc. So if you guys ever get one of these, you want to make sure that you have the boot up disc. Without it, it's a completely useless, useless item. Uh, so let's show you how it looks when you attach it to a GameCube. Here's my GameCube. Slide it right on there. Turn it on its side. And you just screw it right in. Just a few rotations on each screw and it'll be all set. One screw. And the other. And there you go. You have two systems in one. But if you want to get really technical, the when you have this Game Boy Player attached to your GameCube, you have a plethora of games to play. I mean, you're talking about almost the entire library of Game Boy games, Game Boy Color games, and Game Boy Advance games. Uh, but there are a couple of games that I want to call out to that don't seem to work with the... The games will work with the system, but due to some of them having uh, motion control, such as Yoshi Universal Gravitation, WarioWare Twisted and Kirby Tilt and Tumble, those won't work because of the motion controls. And then there's a series for the Game Boy Advance called Bok Tai. Uh, the first game is called The Sun is in Your Hands. Now, the, you could possibly find a way to get those games to work, but in general, it's going to be very inconvenient for you to play those kind of games. But let's take, let's take a look at... Uh, some of the, you can use a bunch of different controllers for the system as well. So let's take a look at those. First off, we've got the Game Boy Advance game game systems. Now these will work as your controllers, but what you're going to need is this cable here that attaches to the top of the Game Boy Advance, and you have the other end that you hook into the GameCube controller ports. Uh, two more options you have is, I'm showing you the WaveBird, but I also have a wireless GameCube controller. You can even use the GameCube controller for the games. And my particular favorite, which I have done a review on, it was actually one of my first reviews, is this, the Hori GamePad. I mean, it, it, it just fits so nicely in the hand. It's beautiful. Uh... But if you want, I'll throw a link down at the bottom of the screen so you can check out that review first. But yeah, as you see, you've got a couple of different options to use controllers. So that's really good. Uh, now, how about we take a quick look at what the games look like on the system itself. So I'm going to show you The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Now the awesome thing about the original Game Boy Advance and the SP was it, it was almost like having a Super Nintendo in your hands. 
and this this game is actually a really good representation of that. I mean, I know there's a lot more games out there for the GBA that looked so much better, but A Link to the Past just still looks so wonderful. So let's take a look. I mean, as you see, the colors pop. I mean, they, they look so much better on a big screen rather than on a small screen like the Game Boy Advance. And it just runs so well. I mean, on my TV, you don't get any input lag or anything. It, it, that's going to vary, vary between TVs and whatnot. But yeah, as you see, it, it looks wonderful. It's beautiful. no one over here but yeah as you see it, it looks really great I mean I definitely have no complaints I mean when I play my handheld games for the most part this is how I play them when I'm playing Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games but let's also take a look at uh, a Game Boy Color game and here we have a Game Boy Color game unfortunately I don't have any original Game Boy games to show you so let's take a look at how it looks. And even on this TV, the system looks beautiful, it's awesome. The game, the amount of games that you get to play with are just so amazing. I mean, you have thousands of different games that you can choose from when playing the Game Boy Player. I mean, you, you're not going to be displeased on how it looks at all. I'm going to hear myself up a little bit. Not that I really need it, but... but yeah, there you go. Uh, how about I show you some game options here? Well, not game options, but uh, the Game Boy Player options. You press the Z button. You have uh, you change game pack. A timer that you can use as a quote unquote parental control. Uh, you have your screen filters, which I, on this TV, I haven't really noticed any difference on changing the filter at all. Uh, you can do some button layouts here for the controller. Uh, you can change your screen size from full to normal. I usually play it on normal. And then you have your different frames for the uh, borders. Me, I usually stay with 20 because I prefer a black screen. I don't like looking at all the other screens that they have. I mean, they, they just don't add anything to it for me, so I just use it, use number 20. Uh, and let's show you how to change a game pack. So what you do is you press A on change game pack. It's going to ask you if you want to quit the game. You click yes. It tells you to change the game pack. You can pop it out while the system is on. You don't have to worry about turning the system itself off. You just have to use that option to change the game packs. And it's as easy as that when you change your game. So, I hope you all enjoyed this review. I mean, the, if you can get your hands on this system, I say do it. But, like I said earlier, make sure you have that boot disc. Without the boot disc, it's impossible for you to play anything on the GameCube with the Game Boy Player. Alright, JGNS slash a mini network. I hope you all have a good one. Uh, one th last thing I should mention about the Game Boy Player. Uh, looking at it, you wouldn't be able to tell, but it actually holds the entire inside of a Game Boy Advance inside. It, it's just minus the screen and minus the buttons. So the system actually runs off of pure hardware and not emulation. It, 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 you're not going to find any hiccups in the in the games at all. You're not going to have any graphical graphical glitches, this, that, or the other thing, because it's running off of emulation. I mean, if you're getting glitches, it's probably because the game system or the game itself is really dirty. But yeah, the system, the Game Boy Player is pure Game Boy Advanced hardware. All right, as I said before, JGNS slash Mini Network. I'm out. Have a good one.